All right, so I am not Kathy Bates, as you have uh, seen that by now, and I promise not to give you guys too much misery. Uh, Kathy Bates, pun there. Um, I, uh, I want to get comfortable, so just bear with me one second here. Um, <clears throat> okay. Public speaking is something that I haven't really done much of, uh, and the whole Moses thing. But I have. <laughs> this isn't a microphone. I have lymphedema. Google it. Before I begin, the theme of this conference is it's all about you. So, for those of you who have lymphedema and you're comfortable. Stand up right now. How great does it feel to be in a room surrounded by people who deal with the same daily struggles? Now I feel like Oprah. You got lymphedema. You got lymphedema. You all got lymphedema. You guys can have a seat now, but it feels good to move the lymph a little bit too, right? All right. My name is Cam Ayala, and I am a primary lymphedema patient. I am the learned celebrity ambassador, one of them, and a compression therapy consultant. But full disclosure, I am not a medical doctor. I am not a CLT. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and a shot of tequila. Actually, no salt and no tequila. We'll make sure it's gluten-free vodka at a minimal amount. Great stuff, by the way. So, I'm not going to sit here and go through my entire medical history, but this is just kind of a pro tip, because how many amongst you have gone to a new doctor, a new physician, and you're filling out the new paperwork for a new patient intake, and they say, have you had any previous surgeries or pre-existing conditions? And they give you maybe a line, right? So I wrote this um, a couple of years ago, and and I'll go back through this, but this is a pro tip. So when you're going into those new doctor's office, you can say, see attached PDF. Because I don't have the time or the space or the energy to go through and talk about my entire medical history, which I'm sure a lot of you who have primary or secondary lymphedema, it's not just lymphedema. It's not just that one thing. There's a lot of contributing factors, right? So another thing, too, that I've experienced going to hospitals all across the United States if you are your own advocate and you do send all of your medical documentations to the doctors ahead of time, I've had several instances where I go in there and the doctors are saying, all right, what are we here to see you for today? And I'm like, first off, I spent $57 in postage sending you a binder that I had laminated that had all of the previous findings and you're telling me you didn't review them at all? So this helps a little bit, right? It just paints a high-level picture. So instead of me going through the entire history of what I've been through, I want to focus on 2014. 2014 is when I started experiencing my first episodes of infection. Uh, and to rewind, when I was 11 years old, I was playing YMCA basketball, running up and down the court, and some of the parents and coaches noticed that it kind of looks like Cam's limping and, and skipping when he ran, and I noticed a lot of back pain after the games, and I just assumed it was because I wasn't super flexible. So naturally, my parents took me to an orthopedic doctor. They took some x-rays, and one of the things that they noticed right away is that you have a leg link discrepancy. Essentially, my right leg was about an inch and a half shorter than my left. And beyond that, they noticed that there was some black spotting on my right distal femur. Obviously, they wanted to take all the extra precautions and make sure that it wasn't cancerous. So naturally, they did a bone biopsy. They removed about a pinky width of the bone from my right distal femur. And what they determined was it wasn't cancerous, thank goodness. It was a hemangioma of the bone. Not super serious, but about three weeks after that surgery, I developed major swelling. Swelling that after going to several doctors, like, oh, no, that's just part of the healing process. That's actually muscle tissue. You're getting stronger. Your physical therapy is working. And I remember thinking, okay, well, how come it hurts like hell every time I put any weight on it and I feel feverish? 
long story short, it took about 11 months. And this is living in Houston, Texas, which has one of the largest medical centers in the United States, for them to give me a proper diagnosis of primary lymphedema. So again, we're going to fast forward here to 2014. It's a Thursday afternoon. I'm getting off work. I was working in advertising at the time, and I had taken a client out to happy hour. Uh, yeah, we had a couple of drinks. Sorry, human being here. And when I was getting out of my vehicle, my right knee locked up on me. And it wasn't like I had any crazy movement to where I think maybe I tore my ACL, but all of a sudden, I felt very feverish. My body was aching, and it felt like someone was taking a hacksaw to my knee. I'd never experienced that level of pain before. And long story short, my friend rushed me to the OR, or to the ER, rather, and the doctors took some x-rays, and they say, OK, well, your, your bone's fine. Let's just get you some Tylenol, too, and see how you feel the next, the next couple of days. We all have had similar stories. And it's very easy as a patient to want to point fingers at doctors and say, it's your fault that you tried to prescribe this treatment or you decided to do this surgery. But they don't know what they don't know. And that's why it is so important for you as an individual to be an advocate. So I'll fast forward here a little bit. Gets a little bit more complicated, right? So from 2014, to 2017, I had major bouts of infection. Specifically in 2017, similar situation. I was getting off work and was not drinking. Uh, I had another episode of infection. And at this point, I had been to some of the top hospitals all across the US, seen some of the top infectious disease doctors, some of the top orthopedic oncologists, and the only consensus they could come to is you have chronic osteomyelitis, we're going to need to do an above the knee amputation. So swallowing that pill, knowing that we've come a very long way in prosthetics, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this right now. Yeah, that's a tough pill to swallow, amputation. And this is someone who played college basketball, someone who loved to work out, Love to dance, not a great dancer, but love to dance. How am I going to walk my future wife down the aisle? How am I going to do all of those fun activities that I had grown accustomed to? Two weeks before I was going to get that amputation in Austin, Texas, where I lived at the time, I got a phone call from an intake specialist at the Boston Children's Hospital around the corner. Being an adult patient, they don't have a lot of space reserved for non-pediatric patients. That's just a sad reality. It is what it is. I had sent them my medical records nine months prior, had done a lot of research, and seen some of the work they've done for pediatric patients and lymphatics with medicine, things like serolemus, and some of the other surgical procedures and some of the imaging, and so desperately wanted to get seen by them, but they just didn't have any spots for me. Call it a miracle, call it an act of God, call it coincidence, call it just good fortune. But two weeks before I was going to get the amputation, they reserved a spot for me. I went there and they did an imaging procedure that identified that I had a lymphatic anomaly, not in my leg, but in my abdominal region. Long story short, had I not gone to Boston Children's Hospital, and got that imaging procedure done, I would have lost my right leg, and that wound would have never healed because the underlying issue was up in my abdominal region. Not every patient is as lucky as I am, but what it comes down to is being your own advocate. Not taking the first opinion, the second opinion, the 15th opinion. There's always going to be a better answer, but it's up to you as an individual to stay vigilant. So just some images from the surgeries that I've had from the infection. They basically treated my, my knee like a piece of meat. Anytime there was infection, they'd go in, they'd debride it, and that obviously did not help my lymphatics. 
learning how to walk 13 times, making great progress in physical therapy, only to be shot back down. Losing girlfriends, losing job promotions, and fortunately I had great insurance. But paying 10% out of pocket for 13 surgical procedures that are over $50,000 each can take a financial toll on you. But I persevered. The first player in NCAA history to play basketball lymphedema. I'll never forget a quote that one of my high school basketball coaches told me. There's two things, Cam, you have control over. Your attitude and your effort. He later contradicted that by giving me another quote that said, Cam, in basketball and in life, hard work does not always guarantee you success. So now, moving forward to what seems like a lifetime ago, only, I guess, six months ago, I was on a popular reality television show called The Bachelorette. Wanting to try something unconventional, I'm from the South, and most of my best friends are either already married with children or in serious committed relationships. I wanted to do something very different. So I had a friend nominate me for the show, and lo and behold, it happened. I don't know how it happened. I got casted. I guess they saw something in me. And that was the very first time I met Hannah, who was the most recent bachelorette. And one of the things I promised myself going into that journey is I was going to be honest, I was going to be vulnerable, and I was going to be myself. Hence, ABC, always be Cam. <laughs> Little did I know that during that journey, short journey rather, my vulnerabilities would be held against me. I won't go into the specific details, but long story short, I wanted to be transparent with Hannah and tell her about my condition, about my lymphedema, about my disease, lymphedema, because it has impacted my life substantially over the past, well, frankly, 15 years, but specifically four years. Hitting rock bottom after having multiple surgeries, after losing girlfriends, I wanted to let her know what she was signing up for. As many of you patients who have significant others, who have friends, families, colleagues, it's not easy to be open about it. You don't want pity. You don't want sympathy. But you know what? Sometimes you need that. People don't understand what they don't understand because they don't walk in our shoes every day. They don't lift that bag of groceries that may be tough on our upper extremity. They don't go to a concert and are in excruciating pain because stagnant standing hurts your legs. So coming from a place where looking into the future, when the cameras stop rolling, if we're hypothetically walking down the aisle and we're exchanging vows in sickness and in health, I need to know that you can handle the sickness. Because my future, still to this day, is a mystery. I don't know if tomorrow, two weeks, two years, 20 years from now, I have another bout of infection. But I needed to know that that was something that she could process and something she could handle as well. So my journey ended on The Bachelorette shortly thereafter. Not because of that. Well, because another man in the house told her that I was going to basically tell her a sob story so I could get a pity rose. Um, that's okay. I've already made amends with that gentleman. It's fine. It just it is what it is. But that's where my journey really began, is post-show. As Bill alluded to earlier, I had reached out to learn, and it just seemed like the perfect fit. For the very first time in my life, I was going to be public about my lymphedema. I was going to scream it from the mountaintops, because something very unique happened right when I got off of the show. I had over a hundred direct messages on my Instagram from lymphedema patients across the world, primary, secondary, saying, Cam, thank you so much for your courage. I have a mother who's going through this. I have a six-year-old daughter who's going through this. And it really made me reevaluate what's important in my life. Did I want to go back to my nine-to-five job in Austin, Texas, selling software? No. 
I want to tell my story to anybody who will listen, but more importantly, I want to lend both of my ears to anybody who wants to tell me their story. Because as Kathy Bates told me in that first dinner we had together, your pain is your strength. And I think that's one thing that every single lymphedema patient can relate to. Your pain is your strength. So beyond that, I wanted to get involved as much as possible with anybody who would take me in after that terrible edit that I got on national television. No, I'm not creepy. Uh, I'm a passionate man. And one of the first groups uh, that reached out to me um, is a nonprofit, Bryland's Feet Foundation. Um, it's a little girl. Uh, Betty, how old is Bryland? Eight or nine? She's, she was born with primary lymphedema, and her mother does great work advocating, works with the Lymphedema Treatment Act. So they have those shirts, support a warrior, so I will gladly support a warrior any day of the week. Next, also as Bill alluded to, I got in contact with Betty Westbrook, who is a certified lymphedema therapist and also one of the founders of Camp Watch Me, the first ever summer camp for kids with lymphedema. What a cool concept. Because I remember growing up, I had never met another person with lymphedema. And Emma, I told you earlier, back in my day, we didn't have Google image search. We had a pamphlet about lymphedema, and you see the worst case scenario. You see a patient with an elephant leg or the most chronic swelling that scared me to death. I didn't know who to relate to. I just knew that I didn't want to get to that point. So going to the first ever camp, watch me. I meet Cora. Cora's three years old and was born with primary lymphedema. Severe in both of her hands, but that's her mother, Casey, who's an amazing mother, taking her all the way to Germany to the Foldy Clinic, taking her to Houston to get the IC green imaging, constantly giving her kinesio tape and making sure she does her daily routine of compression therapy. On an academia side, I went to Texas A&M University, Giga Mags, if you guys are watching out there. They have an incredible lymphatic and physiology and metabolic systems research program. I've gotten to go to my alma mater lecture and work with Dr. Rukowski and how we can bring more awareness to this devastating disease. On more of the nonprofit side, I'm sure a lot of you ladies uh, or fellas have heard of Kendra Scott, one of the top jewelry manufacturers in the US. They had a great nonprofit uh, program partnership. We called it Always Be Charitable with Learn, where I did an appearance in the store, and 20% of all the proceeds went directly to Learn. But as you've heard from many of the speakers, compliance is key. We're dealing with a chronic condition that currently has no cure. So it's up to you, again, all about you, to take this by the reins and to establish what I like to call the new normal. So again, starting with compression, whether it's um, a compression device, doing self-MLD or going to a CLT to get your MLD done for you, nighttime garments, daytime garments. And as Dr. Chuck would appreciate, diet and exercise. So as you can see here, in November of last year, I weighed about 226 pounds, and within the course of a few months, lost about 50 pounds. A lot of that was contributed to diet. No more Taco Bell, no more cold beer. And yes, admittedly, I know that being on a reality TV show where a lot of the guys were a lot younger than me and a lot more fit than me, definitely kick-started my training to know how vain America can be sometimes. But this is one of my favorite quotes of all time. And I think it is pertinent for every single lymphedema patient. It's from Rocky. It will beat you down to your knees and keep you there permanently if you let it. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life or lymphedema. But it ain't about hard, how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take the hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. And so I encourage each and every one of you lymphedema patients, if you're having a rough day, if you're having self-doubt, call me. 
I will give you each my number. You can reach out to me on Instagram because building a community is so important. And they often refer to lymphedema as the orphan disease because whether it be doctors refusing to acknowledge that it's a real condition or classifying it as cosmetic, it's real. We all know it's real. We live with it every single day. And in closing, one of my favorite uh, movies is Dazed and Confused. Naturally, I'm from Austin. And Matthew McConaughey had a quote, just keep living. But to that, I say, just keep limping. <laughs> Thank you, everyone.